All right, guys. Well, like I told you, we got the heater core valve done, jumping right in, moving right along, right into this fuel cell. Now, the story with the fuel cell goes like this. <laughs> I had a guy tell me before that the foam in there gets into your fuel system and just clogs it up and makes a mess. You see how you have these open vent fittings on the top of it? Well, a little bit of the packing foam, because this thing was packed in foam when it came. And when I opened this up and looked inside, sure enough, there was little pieces of white foam in there. So I, uh, I, took, the, I took it apart, <laughs> and I, pu I even pulled the sloshing foam out, vacuumed the whole thing, got all the little pieces of white foam out, but then I put the uh, sloshing foam right back in. And as it turns out, the sloshing foam over the course of a few months of soaking in the gas, it too breaks down and pollutes your gas system. So I gotta take this front cover back off. And, oh, excuse me, that's like uh, fingernails on a chalkboard. <laughs> but it, you have to take this uh, flange off, we'll pull it out, and we gotta carefully get that foam out of there. It's not as easy as you think, because I don't wanna damage the float that's in there. There's a float that's right below that so we're going to meticulously try to get this out make sure that it's still clean and put it back together we're going to do it all together so give me a second to get the camera set up all right guys well to get this flange off there's a ring inside that is uh, threaded as well but it's also plastic now i'll use this gun to go ahead and take these off but when i put it back in i'll put them all in by hand and then tighten them with the ratchet i wouldn't use this because like i say the ring on the inside is plastic. So let's go ahead and take this uh, ring off and uh, be done with it. It's 10 millimeters, so make sure you have a 10 millimeter. We all got 30 or 40 of them and can't find a one. Well, I found one of mine. <laughs> you know how that goes. All right. But I, you know, like I say, with plastic, threaded plastic, you gotta be really careful. This is a nice tank though. I got this tank off of Amazon and I will put a link to the product in the description down below for anybody that's looking for a fuel cell it, it's well built it really is it has beautiful welds on it uh, that and, you know it's got two vents on the top and it's got a feed and return down here it even has a let me stop and show you for one second it has a little bit of a sump built into it on the back all right and I also I, I put a little cutout into my trunk for this little sump so it's kind of it's it's really cool it's just one of the flaws is the sloshing foam and it doesn't just apply to this fuel cell apparently it's all the fuel cells you really got to be careful i mean if you're really having that kind of problem where you're starving for fuel maybe you ought to look in adding a adding a, a coffer dam or something inside the fuel cell but I think we'll be all right. We'll just make sure we got plenty of gas in there before we, before we launch, I guess. <laughs> you know, but uh, I certainly don't want our fuel system getting clogged with pollutants. And you'll see this this foam. It's not very good foam, and I I don't know that there's a better sloshing foam out there. You guys could let me know. Maybe there's something else we could stick in there. I don't know. But uh, for now we're. We're just going to take this out. A couple people told me they had no problems when they took it out. They didn't have to do anything in return. So we're going to go ahead and hope that that's the case. You know, the last time I, like I said, this is the second time I took this apart. So the last time I took it apart, I did not have to uh, clock this or anything like that. There's no particular way. It's just to put in the way it is. So. See if I can get this. I thought I had this out last time. Maybe I did. I thought it was split. Yeah, it's split. It's split right there. And I'm wrong. There's uh, metal insert nuts in there. So there you go. I thought that was threaded plastic. It's been a few months since I took it off. And they are nylock. You can see where they, they're nylock. So. Yeah, you can't just thread them right in. You just need a little assist getting them down in there. But there's your backup flange that goes up inside the tank. All right, you got a gasket on the outside and the outer flange. 
Now the slossing foam. <laughs> it's I gotta try to roll it up. It's 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 kind of big. Let's see if I can roll it up. It's a big piece. It, it covers the whole. I'm sorry to stand in front of the camera. It covers the whole tank. I'm trying to get it out without damaging the float. That float is like right there. It gets right in the way. There it is. It's already coming apart, dragging it out. And you can imagine being in the fuel for a while. What could happen? All right, so there it is. All right. There's your foam, your sloshing foam, and it, it is, it's very brittle, just pulling at it. You can see that, look how it's just coming apart. Just pulling this out, let's look inside the tank. It's kind of dark in there. Let me see if, we can, if I can see inside the tank with the camera. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Look at all that little pieces of foam in there from pulling it out. So we're gonna have to vacuum this tank back out. Could you imagine that getting into your system you know and eventually making its way up into the carburetor clogging everything up that would not be good all right All right, guys, well, the tiniest step like that could save you so much heartache, you know, over the course of a period of time. That quickly, we got all the stuff out. That's a little bit of a dirty, dirty aluminum weld down in that corner. See that over there? That's not dirt or anything. That's just, uh, that's just a little bit of burn through with their aluminum weld. But it, as long as it don't leak, it's all right. And on the outside, looks like a pretty decent weld it looks like he just got a little hot right there that's all all right so we'll go with it we'll go with it so the tank's clean on the inside so now all we're gonna do is put it back together all right well then, like i say the next part of our job is to put this flanged piece back in and put these put the uh the filled, the filled neck or whatever you want to call it back on well we are lucky you know that these got the the metal nuts in there i, I could have swore they were plastic threaded last time but no they're they got a nut inserted in them, but I imagine if you messed with it too much, you could get it spinning and mess it up. So we still want to be very careful with that. All right, so it is a split like this. So you would just split it and roll it in there like so. And you just got to kind of hold it. I'm just going to let it sit down for a minute because I think what I want to do that to keep this gasket from getting sliding all over the place i'm just going to put it start a couple bolts in like four sides of this all right at least that's i think that'll work good i don't know so we got one there just kind of like put them around a little bit so that the gasket doesn't get all uh, weird i guess weird is a good word it's good as any right in there all right and this one put one down the bottom there i think if we can get that to hold that would be pretty cool all right now we'll just bring this flange back up and we just got to kind of hold everything with one hand and get get one of these to line up just to start to start the nut that feels like it's starting all right let me do the same thing with the, the next one and the next one it's kind of fidgety but you know it looks like it's gonna work out it's not as it's not difficult or anything it's just gotta get things lined up and there it is it's lined up the flange the gaskets where it needs to be the flange is lined up in and around it so now we're just gonna put all these screws in but like i say when i when i final tighten i think I'll, i will tighten with the uh ratchet so that we don't like you don't want to get those even though that we found that they're steel nuts we still don't want to get those 
spinning inside that plastic because that's just that's the only thing holding that nut is that molded plastic so still want to be kind of careful with that we don't want our, we don't want our fuel system leaking even though we're building a nice firewall in there to separate the cabin from the trunk and the fuel and the battery acid we still we still want to take every precaution not to have any leaks all right it's just i mean this a, a simple little job like this but it's important because like you know to protect your fuel system so you don't have a heartache later on we try to take every precaution i take my time with this build it's probably taking longer than it should but we're being pretty meticulous we're going through everything i don't want I, when i when i want to go out and play with it i don't want to have to worry about stuff like this all right there we go i just take the, the gun and we'll just very lightly go around just till they stop see how just till they stop Just final tighten them with the ratchet, like I say, just to make sure they're snug. I go go ahead and say that's good. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. I don't pretend to be an expert, but from talking to other people and from what I've read. This stuff right here breaks down and causes nothing but heartache. So I took it out of my fuel cell. And maybe you want to think about taking it out of yours. I don't know. All right. But I tell you one thing about this. It's either going to go towards one of Kim's uh, craft projects or it's going to go in the trash. But it's not going back in my fuel cell. All right. So that's what I got for you guys tonight. So until next time, take care, everybody.